Anyway, chat, we've wasted long enough talking about nonsense and, uh, and nothingness, you know? Crash, that would be, that would be gorgeous to, to talk to me on Twitter. On Twitter, please. Because we got basketball to worry about. As they say, basketball is my favorite sport. They say that. I don't say that. I do enjoy basketball. But we are uh, getting ready for our second season with our expansion teams. Of course, there is my St. Louis Sound, led by De'Aaron Fox. (laughs) Oh, Sacramento was dumb enough to trade me their star player um, after I utilized my nuke at the trade deadline. Which has led to a pretty interesting uh, roster, to say the least. And then, of course, uh, there's the chat side of things. But I need to need to take a quick stroll through. Honestly, for the most part, I'm okay. As we take a look at chat's team as well, you guys, of course, went with the a uh, little bit more of a, a slow and steady approach. I think is a fair way. Um, to kind of talk about it, but a lot of young talent, a lot of young talent. And it's just going to be the question of who breaks through uh, for you guys into your full time lineup um, and just kind of what approach you want to take. And again, it is a big free agent class yet again, even though it is a lot of older uh, talents on that market. Um, the Robinson picture gets me. It's, it's a picture. (laughs) It is a picture. So taking a look here at available players, um, top point guard is James Harden. I can only afford a $5 million contract. Chat can afford a $17 million contract. Um, so it's worth noting for you guys, like your top option, At point guard for a UFA, not that you necessarily need a point guard, but it would be someone like Dinwiddie or Tyus Jones, somebody like that. Um, Obviously, I don't think I'll be spending whatever money I have available to me. It's just not going to be worth it. At shooting guard, of course, Paul George is out there. So was Clay Thompson, Tyrese Maxey, but neither of us will have the money uh, to go after him. Top shooting guard, you could go after Bruce Brown, who you uh, already let go of. Uh, There's also Gary Trent Jr., who's kind of in that price range. There's you you might be able to snag someone like a Malik Monk. It's not a guarantee. but You might be able to. It'd be close. He has no other offers right now, so that's probably about the best you could do. And actually then considering that, like Markel Fultz would probably be in that same category. Um, At forward, of course, Kawhi Leonard's out there. Toby Harris, as a veteran, there is an RFA in Jaden McDaniels who might be worth going after. But again, you wouldn't be able to give him that max offer. And odds are the deal would be matched, um, given, again, that he's an RFA status. So there's not too much either of us can really do here, I don't think. Like Even Isaac Okoro, as a younger player, wants $31 million, as absurd as that is, there's just not much to be done. Aside from you guys, if you wanted to bring like Gordon Hayward back, I think back. Pretty sure he was on your team. Um, like Caleb Martin's out there as a half decent power forward, but again, given the, the youth that you have, who do you go for? You know, for the most part, it's the veterans or Ob Toppin who wants sixty million or Kevin Love because that worked out for you pretty well last time. That worked out pretty well for you last time. Um, and then at center, Mason Plumley. That also worked out pretty well for you last time. Christian Wood. Uh, James Wiseman is an RFA who wants a shitload of money. Um, there's a couple of players here and there. But, yeah, none of the big names. And like I said, given who you have at point guard, I don't think you need anybody. You have Jaden Hardy at shooting guard. Obviously, try to trade Caldwell Pope if you can. You have Beauchamp at forward, which isn't that bad. You know, if you could move out Struess, get this guy in as the starter, you could maybe look for an upgrade there, but he's worth trying to develop. Uh, There really wasn't a better power forward out there than you already have. And then at center, you're set. So let me know if you disagree, but I don't really think there's much you guys need to do. Now that I look at this. 
even at power forward, I I want to get rid of P.J. Tucker and just run with this guy to try to train him up. So I don't think I'm going to be doing anything from a free agency perspective either. Uh, again, I have even less money than you guys. I don't even know if I could sign Kevin Love. I could. It'd be close, but... Excuse me. Goodness, I'd say maybe forward. Uh, let's double check your team again. Yeah, I mean, the Struis. Oh, God bless. Thank you, Basis. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, at best, like, you could bring in a Toby Harris. You could try to compete for Jaden McDaniels. Yeah, that might not be the worst decision in the world, given that you can't really get anybody too crazy. Try to land Jaden McDaniels as an RFA. Not the worst idea in the world. Isaac Okoro is more expensive than he is. Just send out the best offer you can and see if you get him. Any disagreement there? I don't think that's a bad strategy for you guys. 6'9", 185. Why not Martin Jr.? You could go for him, too. He's coming off of a pretty bad knee injury. Um, that, yeah, that's true. You could go after Kenyon Martin Jr. if you wanted to. Um, obviously, McDaniels is a little bit better. So, yeah, he would actually be a 79, though. Um, but is coming off of that pretty big injury. But you could get him on a max offer. You could indeed. And again, Okoro is probably not worth it given the price. So, uh, we'll leave it up to a, uh, to a vote then. McDaniels as an RFA or Mr. Martin Jr. as a UFA? Martin Jr. is probably the way to go, actually. Probably is. Looks like Martin will probably win this vote, but we'll still throw it up to a vote. So, is what's going on? How are you? I'm doing all right. I am doing okay. Yeah, it's going to be a Martin Jr. win. All right, cool. It's Kenyon Martin Jr. Get that extra year in there for him. And uh, do you guys want to drop the price down a little bit or just give him the max offer? You could probably drop it down to about 13 even. Or is at that stage, is it like, ah, it's not even worth it. Just give him, give him the 13 and a half. What do you think? I mean, you're only saving 500k. You know, you're not saving that much money. I'd probably just go with the max. So, scored a breakaway goal refing today. He scored a breakaway goal while refing today. Elaborate? All right, there is chat's offer to Kenyon Martin. I am going to forego a free agent signing uh, this year. Um, I just don't have the uh, just don't have the trade or the uh, money to pull it off. Um, I do not need these trade exceptions at all. Um, I'm well. Mm, I mean, again, it allows you to take back salary and return for the players. Um, goodness, I don't know. Probably hold off. Get rid of these guys. I don't need to hold on to the money. Um, Knicks, we want to hold on to. Fournier and Kennard can go as well. Uh, I do need to sign Dyson Knicks. Um, he'll be an RFA for me. Uh, for you guys, letting go of Hayward and Brown, and Kenyon Martin has agreed. So, there you go. Kenyon Martin has agreed. Renounce Lowry, so I some watch your cap go up. That is true. Letting go of Lowry and uh, Fournier will help a lot. Um, I don't know if it'll help that much. Yeah, it's still a five million. So um, I am allowed to try to bring back Knicks. Um, although maybe I don't have to. Hey, is the point? Oh, he was a seventy. I thought he was a little bit higher than that. All right. Well, I'm going to send out the offer to bring back my own dude. Um, although he is not currently there, at least under affordable. Uh oh. How much money does he want? Oh, he only wants like two million. Yeah. He also doesn't want any term whatsoever. That's not cool. Well, I can overspend not by much to keep you around. What about a three year deal? Player option won't help at all. Let me see if he accepts that. 
You see, and he did. So Mr. Nix, welcome back, and uh, yeah, we're good to go. In terms of our first free agency period. And we'll see, of course, where all the names happen to go, and then yeah, we'll be able to get into Season 2 pretty quickly. I'm intrigued to see how it plays out. Blake Griffin. What a man. There's still some pretty big names out there. I mean, granted, they're older, but... Is free agency as easy to cheese in this as NHL? Um, I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so. Kawhi <laughs> stays in the same building, goes from the Clippers to the Lakers. Harden stays with the Sixers. Paul George goes to San Antonio. Drew Holiday to the Clippers. Siakam. Oh, DeMar DeRozan back to Toronto. You'll love to see it. You'll love to see it. Clay Thompson goes to the Clippers. Okay. Okay. Don Chunas with the Pacers. Angela Russell with the Lakers. All right. Fair enough. Bruce Brown went to the Raptors. That's funny, man. Kelly Olynyk goes to Washington. What a man. What a man. All right. Uh, let's get to our player progression. So for me, Simons gets a little bit better, as does Braun. Harrison Barnes is getting worse, but that's good because now Braun can be the starter. Prosper got a little bit better. He's the same overall as P.J. Tucker. So I don't hate that. Uh, for you guys, Duran goes up. Hardy went up by three. That's very good news for you. Trey Mann up by two. A lot of your younger guys did get better this offseason. That is very, very good news for both of us, really. Well, not that your guys get better, but both of our young guys got better. So You get the point, right? Yeah. As we will auto-generate rookies for the 2025 draft. Feels so weird to say, knowing that we started in the 80s. So, so weird to say. So, let us take a look at chat's Cincinnati Lions. Point guard is still Horton Tucker, Trey Mann, and Miles McBride, who you could debate putting McBride down in the, uh, in the G League. Shooting guard is Hardy, Caldwell, Pope, and Eric Gordon. Um, obviously, you can look to trade the veterans, but the good thing is Jaden Hardy will be the starter. At forward, you have Kenyon Martin, so uh, Marjan Beauchamp could also be put down in the G League. Um, honestly, let, we'll throw this to a vote as well. So again, your G League options. The third point guard, McBride. You have Beauchamp as the forward. Power forward, I mean, it's Jeremy Grant and Trey Lyles. And then at center, it's Duran, Bassey, and Gafford. There's also an argument to put Bassey down there um, until Gafford gets traded. So let me know which of those three you guys think you should drop to the G League. And if there's any disagreement, let me know. But from what I can tell, you guys are wanting to move out the veterans if you can. Um, so I will start off just by putting the oldest dudes on the team on the trade block for you guys. And again, let me know if you disagree or want to change anything, but that is what your trade block would look like in terms of trying to move on from the veterans that are on your team. And then you still have a lot of the uh, younger guys. Honestly, I'd imagine you're probably going to want like Duran and Hardy, probably even Kenyon Martin Jr., Point guard, there's an argument between Trey Mann and Horton Tucker, but I mean, I'd imagine those three in particular you would want as kind of the untouchables right now. So, again, let me know if you disagree. I'm going to look through and set up my team. Looks like Beauchamp's going to the uh, to the G League for you guys because there is no secondary spot. Uh, for my sound, Fox, Nix, and Exum. Simons, Terrence Ross, Bryn Forbes... Forward is Braun, Barnes, and Johan Eklund, who I just uh, drafted. Power forward, Prosper, and Tucker. And center, Robinson, Nurkic, and Clark. Uh, so that's easy. Johan Eklund is off to the G League for me. And in terms of who I'm looking to trade, I don't think Exum will really get me anything. Um, I need to get rid of Harrison Barnes if I can. Need to get rid of P.J. Tucker if I can. And then Nurkic and Clark definitely need to be on that list. Definitely. Untouchables, at least for the moment. De'Aaron Fox, Anthony Simons, Christian Braun. 
Um, he's not untouchable. Let's have Mitch Robinson is untouchable for the moment there, too. So, Horton Tucker and Mann situation feels like CP3 and Lawson. Both will be good. Well, I mean, it turns out getting rid of one of them was the best thing you guys could have done. So, as it turned out. Uh, for Chats Lions... Um, a 12 man, if you want to spread the wealth, obviously you don't need to factor in Eric Gordon, but if you wanted to spread the wealth around for players that you actually care about, a 12 man bench is not a bad way to go. Again, let me know if you disagree. Uh, and then for my team here in St. Louis, I'm probably going to be running the same thing. I'm seeing a lot of suggestions for 10, so we'll, uh, We'll put it to a vote. It is chat's bench 10 or 12. That is your choice. Um, I don't really care about Terrence Ross. I hate that Knicks won't get factored in. I'm probably going to run 12 myself, at least to start the year. I want to get the Sean Knicks or Dyson. Next, sometime. You don't know how, how I pronounce it. Australian, you know, I always pronounce it Exum. It's Exum, not Exum. Fair enough. I always heard Exum, but maybe there was another player whose name was pronounced Exum, and it's Dante Exum. Fair enough. I don't mind being corrected on names. I'd prefer to get it right. Um, yeah. The reason for your affinity for Nix, he's just a younger point guard. That's all. He's, he's my project in case I elect to move on from De'Aaron Fox. So I would like him to... Uh, I would like him to get some playing time. Except for Connor Sherry. <laughs> Never, ever be corrected about Connor Sherry. Never, ever. Never, ever. And fair, it's Dacian Nix, as I learned yesterday as well. All right, it's going to be a 10-man bench for chat. Fair enough. The 10-man bench vote wins out, so you won't totally be spreading the, spreading the wealth, but it won't be a horrible situation. But, yeah, there we go. I think we are good to start this new season. Again, obviously the mock draft uh, doesn't really matter, but it has a dude named Roy Madison at the top of it. So, okay, it's, it's really weird to not have to care about the mock drafts anymore because we're not, uh, we're not in the past. We don't know who the hell is going to be in the upcoming draft. It's very, very weird for me. So, uh, you already sent one guy down to G League, so you got that taken care of. You got that taken care of. We both were able to send down one dude. Uh, you guys do get an offer for Trey Mann. Uh, Pandasis Alexandris, the 30th overall pick from last year's draft, the seven foot Greek center. Oh, only a C potential. Mm. But you also get a first-round pick. Milwaukee will be swapping the best of the two between them and New Orleans. You do have... A, so here's the thing, right? Trey Mann is a 78 at 23. He's only a C-plus, though. He's only a C-plus, and you have Miles McBride, who is a B-plus, albeit a year older. At center, you have Duran and then Gafford and Bassey. So it would create a log jam at center. But is a first round pick worth taking for that log jam? You get a center who's kind of on the same trajectory as man. But basically, you get a first round pick for a dude with a C plus potential. He could get better, though, especially if he continues to be the starter. Um,. I think you could justify that trade. I think you could easily say, nah, just keep it. Uh, we'll put it up to a vote. We'll put it up to a vote. Um, you could easily take this center and then just try to flip him and just be like, hey, thanks for the first round pick. And then try to flip him or Bassey. You're still trying to get rid of Dan Gafford as well. Um, but obviously, Jalen Duran's going to be your guy. So you could easily just try to flip this dude. Like I said, it just depends on how... Much do you want that pick? How much do you like Trey Mann? Even though Horton Tucker is your current starting point guard, and again, you got Miles McBride as well, another young point guard. Um, and it looks like Chat's going to take this trade, and I I don't disagree with that decision. I think that's a a pretty smart one. Even though Trey Mann was pretty good last year, but you don't know how much that potential will go up by. 
Uh, so Trey Man on his way to Nolens for Pandasius Alexandris and a first round pick that was involved in a previous uh, pick swap. Warrior, they certainly do. I found out my dog's having a litter. Uh, you sending a you sending a puppy my way? <laughs> I don't think any illegal trade. Well, you'll have to just add the trade exception, and that's fine. It's not a big deal. There we go. Chad acquires a first round pick, and um, honestly, you don't need to put that center on the block yet. These guys are more valuable for you to have there. Um, but obviously, it creates a kind of interesting situation. Um, wow, it's playing Caldwell Pope over Hardy. But yeah, Alexandris right now is just going to be a bench option for you guys, which isn't the worst. So I don't think that was a bad deal for you. Get an extra draft pick. You already have that slow and steady approach. So I don't think that was a bad deal. Not all, not all. Especially because it's looking like you guys are going to hover around 500. But yeah, if you can, it, basically right now you're just waiting to see who do you get a deal for? Gafford, Bassey, Alexandris. The chat win yet. Socks, they won the prior era. And Herbie, thank you very much for the raid. What's going on? How are you? How'd the stream go? What were you up to tonight? Whoops. Big typo there. There we go. Why is the Twitch thing broken in terms of telling you what people were playing? It's been broken for like two weeks. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Unbelievable. Uh, you guys do get another trade offer. It is Trey Lyles, the 29-year-old power forward, for Grant Williams, who's 25. Uh, he does have a C-plus potential, but you do get... Ooh, then again, cap situation. Cap situation might stop you there. You don't have a good young power forward that you're building up around. But Trey Lyles' deal is up at the end of the year. Williams is making $13 million a season. That contract's pretty rough. He was like a B potential, maybe. I'm I'm with you on that one. I'm with you. Do I renounce trade exceptions? If so, so crash trade exemptions are essentially. Per, the, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it. Pretend it's just. Do you want to keep the cap from that player that you traded? It is basically cap retention. It's like okay. So I don't have Grant Williams on my team, but I kept him as a trade exception, meaning his $13 million salary is still counting against my cap. Um, kind of how it works. So for the most part, you really got no reason to unless your team is absolute dog shit and you want to kind of get to a decent spot money-wise. Um, so yeah, that'll be a decline for chat. I do think that's a pretty smart move. So, so if I renounce, I get rid of the cap. Correct. Correct, correct. Uh, ooh. Okay. That's that's a weird one. Also, Crash, did you get back to me on Twitter yet? You give me those Jersey deets. You do it. I wasn't buying that Martian jersey. Nurkic for Brook Lopez. I would have to give them... I don't have them yet. Well, still, just talk to me about how long I'd have to wait. And, 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 and. Give me the dates, son. Anyway, um, I'd have to give up a 2016 or 17 first round pick for their 2029. I'm not really in the business of that. Rick Lopez's deal is up at the end of the ah, yeah. I feel like I could trade Nurkic in a different deal. Indeed, socks. I'm in control of the St. Louis Sound. As you guys do get an offer for Bassey, but it involves a first-round pick. So it's Charles Bassey and Milwaukee's first-round pick this year for Isaiah Joe and the Clippers' first-rounder in 2026. So Bassey right now is your second-best center. Not bad, 24-77 B-. minus. Joe, 25 year old guard, B plus 78 overall. Obviously, you already have a decent guard. The problem is that we just saw the Clippers sign quite a few people. Um, let's see how the Bucks and how the Clippers are doing. So, the Bucks, fringe playoff team right now. The Clippers kind of suck. Clippers kind of suck. In terms of your already established 
pick situation. You have Milwaukee in your own. Um, and then you have another pick coming in 2026 that either be Milwaukee's or New Orleans, uh, as well as your own. And you got Milwaukee's in 2027. So, again, I think there could be some justification for taking this. Milwaukee's in a playoff situation right now. The Clippers aren't, but that Clippers pick is for next year. You get rid of Bassey, but Joe isn't exactly what you'd need to replace him. It's an interesting one. I think, again, we'll throw it over to a uh, to a vote for you guys here. There's positives and negatives, I'd say, to each side of the deal. But it would clear out the log jam at center a little bit and get you down to three centers. And then shooting guard, obviously, it's a little bit of a log jam. But if you guys move out Caldwell Pope, or he's gone at the end of the year, so was Eric Gordon, you'd have Hardy and that other guy behind him. So... The Joe Mama jokes would be great. Would they, though? Would they? That's the question. That's the real question. All right. Uh, it's a pretty close vote, which is fair. It doesn't surprise me. No, because we already have a couple 26 picks, two 25s. Hmm. And if the Clippers continue to be as bad, I, I'd be surprised because they shouldn't be this bad anyway. But then again, well, they're actually not as good as I thought. Chad elects to not take the trade, which is fair. That's right. They signed Clay Thompson, but he immediately broke his left leg. All right. Well, chat will uh, decline that. One vote decides it, indeed. Everyone's vote matters, baby. I mean, except in America, but, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It wasn't a draw for once. Mm. Uh, let's see. You guys get another offer. It's Trey Lyles in a second for 25-year-old Paul Reed. Honestly, not a bad deal. You get younger. You give up a second that's not that great. But again, Lyles is 29 years old. He's on an expiring deal. Reed is just about as good. To be honest, I'd take it. Because you never know if Reed's potential could go up. And giving up a second round pick isn't a big deal. Any rejection of this? I honestly think it's a decent deal. You get younger at power forward. Everyone's vote matters, especially if you're from a state with two people in it. <laughs> All right. Looks like that's going to go through Trey Lyles in a second. To Philadelphia, power forward Paul Reed. I don't think that was a bad deal at all. It does still have Jeremy Grant as your starting power forward, but update the trade block. Indeed. Um, ooh, lower left leg stress fracture for McBride. That's not great. Um, in terms of who else you could add. It makes sense now probably to add Bassey or Alexandris. Um, to be honest, if you want a better return, have it be Charles Bassey. You might as well. Alexandris is good enough to be a backup center. It should be Bassey to try and get a better return. Let me know if you uh let me know if you disagree, but I don't think uh I don't think you will. Uh Crash duly noted on the Twitter side. Um Keep in touch. I'm a little bit nervous because I know some of these uh, pro shop jerseys are going fast, but I wouldn't complain about being able to get both. So I would not complain. Let's march on here. Uh, you got a trade offer for Horton. Oh, God, no way. I'll decline that for you immediately. <laughs> you see Horton Tucker in a first. It's like, oh, God. So no. Uh, no reason. Uh, pff, Jeremy Grant for John Collins. So Grant's 30. Collins is 27. Collins is on an expiring deal. So you might only have him as a short-term rental. But it would get rid of that Jeremy Grant contract. So even if John Collins isn't the long-term solution, 
It gets rid of Jeremy Grant unless you think you can get something else for Grant, given that he's two and a half. Uh, but with that contract, with that contract, it's it's tough to say if you would get any more than that. All right, I'm not really seeing anyone disagree. Jeremy Grant on his way to Utah for John Collins. And uh, John Collins will immediately take his spot on the trade block and see if you can flip him. See if you can, see if you can. Yeah, Collins and Duran's a pretty good one-two punch, though, for big men. Not bad. I don't think that was a bad move either. Um, obviously, you've, you've had Grant on the team now for a year and a half, and no one's traded for him. So at that point, I yeah, probably just get rid of the deal. Of course, he was the one, uh, one of the guys that was uh, auto drafted for you. So, goodness. Well, that would be dumb to say no to. It is. Only thing coaching settings that we've agreed to be able to touch is bench size. Aside from that, it's up to chance. It is Harrison Barnes, the 32-year-old, and a second-round pick for 27-year-old Jonathan Isaac, who I'm pretty sure I had on my team before. Um, Isaac is younger. His deal's expiring sooner. Um, there's really no reason for me to not take that. So, yeah, Harrison Barnes in a second for Jonathan Isaac. I'm, uh, I'm good with that. I am good with that. Obviously, I don't want Isaac to necessarily be the starter, but... It is what it is. I'm going to immediately put him on my trade block, too. Mobski, what's up? I don't think he did. But if he did, I missed it. So, hello. Hello, hello. Two first names. No deal. <laughs> oh, God. Old Jonathan Isaac. Goodness. Goodness, goodness. Welcome to 2025, everybody. The dist Also, you, you like how I'm only $68 million in the hole now instead of half a billion? Jesus. Sasperla, what's up? Mm, hold on. I like the idea of moving Nurkic. Boston's 2026 first rounder for a 2028 first rounder in Cameron Johnson. Johnson's 28. Mm. I'm going to say no to that. I want to move Nurkic in a different deal. So. Have no interest in swapping around first round picks like that. You guys do not want to take that deal. <laughs> John Collins in a first for Jordan Clarkson and Andre Drummond. I'll decline that for you as fast as I possibly can. You're welcome. Jesus. 2025 will be in my 30s. Me too. Cheers to that. A couple of old fucking men. Uh, Nurkic for Gordon Hayward and Cody Martin. I mean, it doesn't even really save me money. No. People want Nurkic. They're just not giving me the offer that I want. So, fuck off. We love you, Crash. <sighs> Crash, I'm freaking nervous about that jersey now. Because, obviously, that'd be a hell of a fucking deal you could swing me. But, I'm just nervous about waiting. I said, man, you never know. Hockey jerseys. It's like, oh, yeah, we got plenty of them. Oh, they're all gone. Like, literally the next day. So, we're still like 15 years away from the Lumberjacks making the Super Bowl. <laughs> At least. At least. Which, by the way, that main event's tonight's stream. The last hurrah for the Salt Lake City Lumberjacks will be tonight. So, you guys get an offer for Mr. Horton Tucker. 29-year-old Javon Carter. No, thank you. Can immediately decline that one. Gotta start collecting MLB jerseys. That's fair. That is fair. I I went with the pick one sport and stick with that approach for jerseys. Yardbird, yes it is. It is 2K24. It is indeed. We're gonna be what a month out from the deadline? Around there? All right, Nurkic for my boy, Mr. Zubats. We love ourselves in Evitsa. Um, So it's Nurkic and Exum. 
Zubats and Justin Holiday. I mean, it's not bad. Like, it gets me out of the Nurkic contract. I've had a bitch of a time trying to move him, but I am getting plenty of offers. I'm honestly going to say no to it because I'm not in desperate need of the money. And I don't think Zubats would replace Mitch Robinson for me, even though he is hurt at the moment. So, I'm going to say no to that. I don't have to get rid of Nurkic this season. Um, so, I'm not going to. Also, I, I, I do love... Basketball reference is such an amazing site. Um, with Zubots, I forgot to mention this the other day. Uh, no reason for you guys to trade for Marcus Smart and Derrick Rose. Although Derrick Rose is hilarious. Um, I do love the basketball reference has the uh, player nicknames. And um, Zubots has some good ones. I did see that Cat Friendly has an NBA uh, site now. Um, but Zublock, Zublocka. Big Z, Zoo, Zupak, and Zoo Alcinder. None of those nicknames are forced at all. Jonathan Isaac and Dacian Nix for Jalen McDaniels. Zoo Alcinder is really good. Uh, I'd like to get rid of Isaac, but I'm not getting rid of Nix to do it. So, the pool holes Angels jersey and a Kemp Dodgers jersey. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't buy bat, uh, freaking baseball jerseys. Maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> Those are the two that you have. That's a warning sign to just be like, don't bother. Don't bother. <laughs> that's some rough luck on jerseys. Jesus. I was 16. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I'd, I would have bought a pool holes jersey at the time, too. Um, this would require you to give up a first round pick. But it's John Collins for Kevin Porter Jr., his B potential at 24, and Jock Landale, who's 29 years old. Um, obviously, Kevin Porter, not bad. But having to give up a first-round pick to get him when you already have Horton Tucker, I I don't think I would. If you didn't have Horton Tucker, I'd consider it. Um, but yeah, Landale's 29. It's kind of a filler option. Um, I, yeah, I don't think we even need to put it to a vote, really. It's not uh, not worth it. For a variety of reasons, not worth it. <laughs> My goodness. And today is the deadline, chat. The only question... Is do you use the nuke to try and get something for Caldwell, Pope, for Collins, Gafford? The answer's got to be no. You just don't have that much as to where it's worth blowing it up. Um, and then for me, I still got stuck with a couple of players that I didn't want to get stuck with, but it is what it is. Fair, what's going on? All right, at the end of next year, De'Aaron Fox is planning on testing free agency. That's not good. I used the nuke last night. That was the first one that had been used. PJ Tucker can go. Uh, Mitchell Robinson is planning on potentially leaving at the end of next season. Nurkic would resign, but I don't want him back. Anthony Simmons is the only guy that I'm worried about. I need to resign him now. <sighs> so I don't lose him. Yeah. Mr. Simons, you gotta go. I mean, by you gotta go, I mean you gotta resign. There you go, Mr. Simons. Um, this might put me into a rough spot heading into next season, especially if the Aaron Fox plans on leaving. Uh, for you guys, in terms of anything contract related, John Collins does want to leave. Um, you can resign Jaden Hardy. No reason not to. Might as well get him on a five year deal. Sign him, and you're good. No reason to not bring him back. Uh, Charles Bassey plans on testing free agency after next season. And that's all that you have to worry about. But yeah, kind of as expected. When you traded for John Collins, there was always a chance he was going to leave. But you guys did free up a good amount of cap space moving Jeremy Grant for him. Uh, that, yeah, I guess Collins did have the player option there, too. Fair. So who knows? Maybe he'll stay. 
But it, it wouldn't line up with the whole, like, hey, wants to leave but has a player option. So, unless he wants the money. So, it be what it do. So, we will see. It looks like there's going to be playoff basketball in St. Louis again. I don't think we're going to be the number one seed, um, which isn't surprising, really. Uh, we can go past the deadline because we already checked. Um, yeah, 40 wins. We should very well be playoff bound. And that's good. It's good. Get that sweet, sweet playoff revenue to only be like 60 million in debt as opposed to 69 million. What a tragedy. What a tragedy. Oh, God. Goodness, at least you have some cap space. That's true. Cap space is always nice. What a nice number of debt. I mean, if you had to be in debt, it's got to start with a 69, right? Uh, baseball did not. But thank you for the, the resub on the prime. <laughs> thank you for it. We'll see if it pops up. Twitch, is, Twitch has been weird the past few days. Uh, Warrior, yeah, probably. I mean, if I'm awake, my sleep schedule's kind of dipped. Unfortunately, um, I pay attention to every Liverpool game, man. You know how this works. You know how this works. I care if it's the Europa League. I'm down to lose to Sevilla in the final again. All they fucking do is make the Europa League final. Are they even in the Europa League this year? I don't know if they are. They might have made the Champions League. Who's to say? Cleveland's Darius Garland wins MVP. Wow. Those Cavs jerseys suck. Dude, they look like practice jerseys. What the fuck? Why are they so bad? <laughs> Why are they so bad? Dude, those are like the worst freaking jerseys they've ever had. That's crazy. Like their primary logo is okay. Those jerseys fucking suck. There it is. Baseball. 61 months on the primer, no less. Baseball, thank you for that. I want to use that NBA paint jersey. Right? I mean, that's, that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, you can look at the history of their jerseys. Those suck. I just, like... Even, even the weird, like, blue-striped one that they had in the 90s was better than that. And then obviously it's like you talk about, and I'm probably biased, but, you know, even these at least were a little bit more creative than that. But then obviously, like, the LeBron era jerseys are S tier. People are voting those five out of seven. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. These jerseys are phenomenal. Especially compared to that. The fuck is that? In my Nash. <laughs> Indeed, baseball indeed. Your rookie of the year, the Phoenix Suns, Dale Quinn. It's so weird to see rookie of the years that are just randomly generated now. My God. Sixth man of the year, Cole Anthony in Golden State. Defensive player of the year is Wemby. Is Wemby. That just came out last year. I know. It's just I'm saying they look even worse here. They're trash. So bad. They might actually look better than that, but I'm saying like on that player model with him in that pose, they look like practice jerseys. Jaden Hardy wins most improved player for your Cincinnati Lions. Not surprised. Look at those Lions jerseys. Better than the Cavs jerseys. Clutch player of the year, Zach Levine. Dunkin' basketballs. I mean, damn, he averaged 27 points a game. Coach of the year, J.B. Bickerstaff. Executive of the year, Brandon Harris. Your first team, Garland, Doncic, LaMelo Ball, Giannis, and Ja. Your all-defensive team is Wemby, Giannis, Evan Mobley, Lonzo Ball, and Luka Doncic. And your all-rookie team, Dale Quinn, Al George, Jonathan Curry, Gilberto Conover, and Leroy Ryder. 
It's weird, and I don't like it. <laughs> Let's see. The St. Louis Sound are indeed in the playoffs as the three seed in the West. And Chats Cincinnati Lions are the fifth seed in the East. We are both playoff bound yet again. Any year could be the year now, right? <laughs> 